Hi, Patrick Hooch back again. Today, I'm going to be showing you a demo on something we call closed loop automation, which is simply the process of gathering some telemetry from the system, running it through something we call analytics, which will then look at all those pieces of data that are being collected and make a decision. And then something will occur based upon that decision. In this demo, we're going to be looking at traffic rates and some other telemetry coming from the system and changing core frequencies in order to save power. So here I have a dashboard that has three different servers on it. They are Wolf Pass systems, thus the name Wolf Pass. And what I'm showing here in the big graph here is this is the core frequencies. On the next to that is how much power is being drawn by the entire system and then how much traffic is being processed on each one of those systems. So these are identical servers. They're dual socket uh, Xeon Gold servers. And they're running identical workloads. They're running eight instances of the virtual cable modem termination system, a sample VNF available from Intel on 01.org that uses uh, DPDK for processing packets. And of course DPDK uses pull mode drivers so that the, it goes and it pulls the data from the NIC rather than being an interrupt driven mechanism. This, this produces a, a, a very reactive and efficient way to process packets. But each one of those CPU cores that, where this pull mode driver is running runs at 100%. So you can see that on these bottom two systems that are um, using Linux power governors to control the frequencies of the, ser of the cores. So the middle system here, WolfPass 107, is using the on-demand CPU power governor. So you can see where those pull mode drivers are all running because those cores are all in turbo mode. And on-demand means that the, the CPU frequencies will be put into the maximum frequency that that, that core can go into if the CPU utilization is over 50%. The bottom system is using the performance um, CPU power governor and that is even more aggressive in that if any of the cores are over a certain percentage, I believe it's 50%, all the cores are put into the maximum frequency mode that is capable. So in this case, all three of these servers are all running eight instances of the VCMTS uh, sample VNF, all processing the same, the payload, everything's identical. And so you can see that there are, each of them are running the same or processing the same amount of data. However, the power utilization is significantly different. So that's the only difference between these computers is the power, uh, is the, actually is the frequencies of the cores and how they're being controlled. And you have a pretty big uh, variation in power. So you know, with the modern servers, uh, we can adjust the core frequency of any of the individual cores that we want. So here I'm going to put them in the random mode and and the cores, you know, this put into a, a random frequency. And then I can also do a fun, you know, I can make a pattern. The point here is that I can adjust the core frequency for any of these, uh, any and all the cores. So again, we go back to the state where they're all running the same workload and the core frequencies are, are set. In this first server, it's set at the vent bare minimum, which is one gigahertz. So the range of frequencies on these servers is the minimum is one gig. So I'm running a workload and everything's the same. Now, if I increase the traffic, you'll see that the traffic um, amount of processing is going on. So now we're up to you know 22 gigs. Uh, on these servers, but only you know 19 or 20 gigs on the first server because uh, I'm actually dropping packets. So let's tr let's dig into that server in a little more detail and take a peek. So this is that server, and this is the dashboard for that server 106 where I've pinned all the cores to be at one gigahertz. So the top of the chart here is the CPU utilization for each one of the cores, and the next chart is the um, CPU frequency. And down here in the middle, we have on the right-hand side, we have a, a live view of, of the how much power is being consumed by the server and how much traffic is being processed and the average core frequency. And that same information is shown in this histogram here where the red represents the traffic 
the white is the core fre the average core frequency, and the blue is how much power is being consumed. And down the bottom here is the aggregate of those service groups. Uh, so we're processing, you know, about three gigs per service group, and how many packets we're processing per service group, and how many packets we're dropping. So that's not a good thing. That means I'm not I'm not processing. I don't have enough processing power to process those all the packets. So I'm actually dropping packets. So what happens if I increase the frequency to correspond with the new workload? So you'll see that as I do that, each one of the cores now went up to 1.5 gigahertz and um, the traffic rate bumped up because now I'm not dropping any packets. So I was dropping 3,200 packets per second per service group uh, and I have eight service groups. So now I'm, try I'm processing more packets, but I'm also using more power. So we have a slight jump in power here, right? Now the same thing will happen if I increase the traffic rate again, you'll see that I'll start dropping packets. It's because those pole mode drivers, again, they're using 100% of the CPU. The CPU is running a, a little a little bit slower when I, when I reduce the core frequency. So if I increase the core frequency once again, where those cores are running even faster, then there will be sufficient uh, processing power to be able to make it so they're not dropping any packets. So what I'm demonstrating is we have the ability to be able to adjust those cores. And if we can somehow figure out to tie how what the packet rate is to um, what the desired core frequency is so we could save power, then we could have a really nifty solution. And we have that for this sample workload running in our lab. So we're going to turn on the analytics part. So now we have some intelligence here that's going to automatically adjust those core frequencies rather than me doing it manually. So now if I drop the core frequency or if I drop the traffic rate down to a low rate, you're going to see that, hey, those cores were all dropped in frequency down to the minimum because I'm running a minimum amount of traffic or uh, such a lower level that that it can uh, drop the cores uh, and it knows it won't drop drop any packets. Now if I jump it up to medium, You'll see that again, the, the cores will all increase in frequency as did the packet rate and, uh, and also so did the power. So now if I jump to high, you'll see this is gonna go up again. We're gonna increase the cores up to two gigahertz, a little over 2.1. And <clears throat> the power utilization obviously went up to correspond with that, but so did the packet rate. And I'm still not dropping any packets. And then I can even jump into the maximum rate, which will put those cores into turbo mode and um, now I'm using a lot of power, but I'm also not dropping any packets. Now I can put this in, I have this pattern here where it's just going to start off a low packet rate and it slowly increase the uh, packet rate over time until it reaches uh, our maximum value that we programmed in for this demo, and then I'll start dropping in. So it'll be this, this kind of a, a mountain top and valley pattern that will appear. While that pattern is, is uh, showing up on our screen, let's jump into the slides here and we'll go to show you how this is working. So we have is we have a bunch of telemetry that's being collected from our platform, from the platform monitoring unit, the PMU, some RDT stats, some, maybe some information from the NIC, and that's all being collected by Collecti, which is an open source mechanism for collecting telemetry from your platform and sending it someplace in various different kinds of publishers. Uh, so in this case, the Collecti data is going into our analytic engine. And for this very simple demo, we are also collecting telemetry from the actual application itself. So we have these VCMTS workloads um, running in Kubernetes pods. And so we're collecting some stats from those as well. And all that's being processed by the analytical engine. And we have a machine learning algorithm in there that has learned um, that at a certain traffic rate, we can adjust the core frequency to uh, a given value without it dropping any packets. So after this learning process, now it's watching the, the traffic rate and it's making a prediction based upon uh, you know, a history saying, OK, I'm, I'm looking at the traffic rate flow for the last 30 seconds. With that information, I'm, I'm going to make an estimate that 
I can adjust the core frequency to this value based upon what I think is going to happen over the next 10 seconds or so based upon the, the, the history of that traffic pattern. So if we go back to our system here, you can see that this traffic pattern is starting to appear now where the traffic starts at a low and it goes up to a peak and it goes down. And as you do that, you can see that the core frequency adjusts along with it. So as the, as the traffic pattern goes up, the analytic engine says, oh, I'm, I'm reaching a traffic rate where I can adjust the core frequency to compensate for uh, or to, to a certain rate where I won't drop any packets until which right here, as you can see, where turbo mode kicks in and we, we suck up lots of power. So we're processing all these packets as in turbo mode. And then as the, the, the data rate starts to drop, you'll see that the analytic engine will now make the core frequencies drop. And so you save power. So you have this um, peaks and valleys kind of um, pattern in, in this very simple traffic pattern. Okay. So let's take a peek now at some uh, at an example of a of a real life kind of situation. So this traffic pattern here actually comes from a cable customer and which is where the VCMTS um, is a virtual cable modem termination system. This so it was designed specifically for the, for that customer. This is a traffic pattern over a 24-hour period from, from peak to peak is a 24-hour period. And uh, I've compressed it into like a little 10-minute cycle um, for demonstration purposes, or else we wouldn't be able to see any of this stuff move. Uh, so um, 30, 30 minutes uh, is, is like a more than a full screen here. So this is showing those three systems again, except now they're in reverse order. By Basically, it's uh, ordering by the amount of power being consumed. So the top system here is the one that had the performance power governor where all those cores are in turbo. On the right here is the current value and, um, and then the, how much data is being processed. And then the middle system here is the, is the one where it was using the on-demand power governor. And the bottom one is the analytics. And on the left here is, a, is an average of the data uh, over the last 30 minutes. So all this data is being pushed into a time series database called uh, InfluxDB. I just simply go do a query and say, hey, give me the average of all these values for the last 30 minutes. So you can see that as uh, in, in the top system, the, the power here, again, is the, is the blue line, uh, is really pretty constant. And so is it for the on-demand one. But when we have this analytic engine, the thing that's analyzing and looking and making decisions, you can see that as the power, as the uh, traffic pattern goes up, the CPU frequency and therefore the, the uh, power utilization goes up as, a, as does the traffic. And then when the traffic goes down in this pattern here, you know, this is probably, you know, in the middle of the night, everybody's watching their TV shows and then everybody starts going to bed, the traffic pattern dies. And then early in the morning, some people get up and start watching TV and then it's pretty slow throughout the day and the evening picks up again. So with this pattern, this analytic engine is able to adjust the, the frequency of those cores on an as-needed as basis and achieving a pretty significant power savings. So on the top system here, we're, which is the most extreme power usage uh, for these particular systems, it's using 360 watts. That's the average power utilization over you know, half an hour period, which again, that half an hour period is going to be representative of, uh, of uh, like three days worth. So now we have the bottom system, which is the one that's using analytics, is using uh, only 200, an average of 242 watts. Of course, it's going to vary as the power utilization and this, the core frequency changes. But 240 watt average versus 360 is a, is a pretty significant power savings. Again, this is a a very simple workload and they're all running the same exact um, workload all all eight instances are running the same exact traffic pattern so it's a very simple um, analytic component for us to be able to make these decisions but it's a uh, it's an interesting it's an interesting start to what you can achieve by monitoring and and looking at this at these components again it's this this closed loop is taking a peek at what's going on uh, by collecting this data and pushing it in, you know, making a decision and pushing the decision down. 
most of the decisions right now are, on this particular demo are done based upon the VCMTS app is, is actually telling us, has told us uh, what the current packet rate is and um, has it lost, dropped any packets. That's how the learning is done. We recently have done some new experiments on this and have actually been able to make some, uh, the basically the same decisions using only telemetry from uh, RDT and PMU statistics. And hopefully we'll have a follow-up video and maybe a paper on that sometime in the future. I'm going to quickly show what the system looks like here in case you're curious. So I have uh, each one of these boxes, I have uh, Kubernetes running and I have eight instances of these VCMTS pods that have um, are using DBDK, Polmo drivers on SRV virtual functions connected to a, a, a bunch of 10 gig ports. And uh, then we have CollectD collecting the data from the uh, from the PMU and RDT and CPU utilization, all that kind of stuff. And that's being collected by CollectD and pushed into InfluxDB, as is the stats from the cable modem termination system uh, instances. And that's all being read by this analytic piece that we created, um, just as, as a relatively simple machine learning thing that we created to make these decisions. And then that is a, sending a message to this, this little component that I created just for these demos. It's called the Node Frequency Manager. And all it does is just go and, and change the cores of the frequencies uh, by writing to a file down in sysfs under Linux. That's the uh, receive systems. Uh, and then here's the details of the computers. We have a couple of Xeon Golds on each one of them running Ubuntu and Kubernetes and um, a bunch of memory and, and, uh, and some Ethernet cards, uh, each at uh, 40 gig cards running in, um, in 10 gig mode. So I have four four by 10 cards. So as you can see here, in summary, using some kind of analytics uh, and collecting this telemetry from the system, you can achieve some pretty interesting power savings. We believe that power savings is just, is just one of the things that you can do using telemetry. There's some other activities we're looking into such as more intelligent placement on systems based upon, you know, are you having cache thrash on that system? Can we move a workload and figure out what the noisy neighbor is? We, we have hundreds of pieces of data that you can go collect with CollectD uh, and uh, tons and tons of stats coming from RDT and from the PMU that we're beginning to analyze with our data scientists to figure out, you know, what's the correlation between some of these different workloads and what kind of interesting decisions can we make? So we believe that um, there's a lot of potential here. And if you think that uh, there's some workloads that you're working on for your VNFs that can do something like power savings or maybe more intelligent workload placement or memory uh, bandwidth allocation using RDT technologies, please contact us or your field representative and let's work together. Let's figure out some interesting solutions you can use with all this telemetry that's being that's being collected let's let's make a closed loop system where we're collecting telemetry and we're pushing it into your analytics component and then having it make a change or send some notification to the orchestration layer to move a workload or to not place a certain workload in a, a certain place we believe there's a, a lot of potential here so feel free to, to reach out thank you for your time